I've thought and thought and thought about those last two metaphors in this gospel for, for years. I have worn a cape for decades. Um, I haven't worn it now since I've been on crutches because crutches and capes do not mix. If you want to fly through the air and land on your face, do that. But when he's talking about the unshrunken cloth onto an old cloak, that one I know. You have to pre-shrink. You have to pre-age the cloth to match the cloth. It would be sort of like putting silk and leather together. You must then prepare the silk before you can attach it to the leather because the dissimilar cloths, the, dis the dissimilar fabrics pull differently on each other and they actually create tears. But the wine and the wineskins, that one I couldn't quite figure. One, because I don't drink. And another, because I didn't know enough anymore about wine. But I do have friends that have very, very skilled and high top quality vineyards. They've won medals for their wines year after year after year. So I called um, Julie and I asked her about that. She goes, every year somebody calls me about this one gospel. And she laughs because I just put it on the website. I said, why don't you? She goes, I think I will. She said, what they're speaking of in the gospel is new wine is the wine that hasn't been aged at all. It is the wine that has been crushed, has been pressed, and the renin has been added to it. But it is so fresh, you couldn't drink it. It has to age. And in that time, they didn't age it in barrels. Who had that much wine? No one. But they would age it within the skin. And that would give the flavor. But you put it in an old skin because that would give the flavor of last year's wine. You always kept the skin because that way you kept giving that flavor again and again and again. But then the Lord says here, you put new wine poured into fresh skins. That's for the first six months. Because during that time, the wine swells. Because the renin, the chemical reaction between the renin and the new grape does that. And an old skin has no elasticity, where a new skin does. Um, there's other metaphors in Mark's gospel. Christ asks, can the wedding guests fast? The use of the bridal metaphor expresses a new relationship of love between God and his people in the person and mission of Jesus to his disciples. It is the inauguration of the new and joyful messianic time for, of fulfillment and the passing of the old time. This is in conjunction with the Christ's first miracle occurring at the wedding at Cana, which cements the metaphor of joy and love of and for the Messiah, making it almost a honeymoon period. Any attempt at assimilating the Pharisaic practice of fasting or of extending the preparatory discipline of John's disciples beyond the arrival of the bridegroom would be as futile as sewing a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak or pouring new wine into old wineskins with the resulting destruction of both the cloak and the wine. The loss of the cloak is understandable to anyone who has ever created a garment with two dissimilar properties. If one is stretchy 
or is similarly not as rigidly holding as the other. The seams between these dissimilar cloths must be done in a manner so as to negate the effects of the stretchier material. These stitches block out the piece in one position and allow no changes. Not the most joyous mental picture, if this was what Jesus was proposed to him. You either take the old cloth as is, take it with a simple patch of whatever you used, or a patch of stretchy material for very young, crowded, sewn into garment, so it does not move for any one. In other words, it was joyless. Fasting is rendered superfluous during the earthly ministry of Jesus, for joy of his presence, superseded sadness, horror, and rage at that final Passover, and the midnight call of anguish. No, that morning there was no Passover, but the celebration of the whispered rising. He is alive. He has risen. He is alive. He has risen. Alleluia.